Welcome to the Higher Power Podcast, where your safe zone for discovering your true self is created. We are your hosts, Frank Sieben and Jill Humphreys. Hi everyone and welcome to our 18th episode of the Higher Power Podcast. And guys, before we start, we do this in every show and this is no different. We really would love to say thank you for all the love and blessings you send our way in on a weekly basis. We are really beyond grateful for everything coming our way here. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to be back with you again and I can't believe it's a whole week on past It just seems like yesterday we were doing episode 17 and getting really excited about that content. But this week is even more really good content. Oh, yes. And again, we've gone into our research, haven't we, Frank, on specific things that mean a lot to you and I. Yes, Jill, you're absolutely right. We've gone deep. And this week we want to give you some little tips how you can reclaim your life balance. And we call it Reclaim Your Life Balance Formula. Well, what does that mean? This means we want to show you how to reduce your clutter and how to focus on the right things in life. How to focus on focusing the right things. <laughs> and how to reclaim your, your balance. And we will discover together that life is a marathon and not a race. And it is essential that you create space and time for yourself where you find peace and balance. And this also has to do with considering your values and any decision you might make that drive you into this direction. And there's actually a German author, his name is Hermann Hesse, Hermann Hesse in German. He said, within you there is a stillness and a sanctuary to which you can retreat at any time and simply be yourself. Mm, I really like that. Well, yeah, it's it's not about being busy. It's we I mean we all have full packed to-do lists and we really can get lost in these to-do lists and it is These to-do lists are not only a to-do list, this is also a mentality. This is a habit to pack your day with to-do lists. And I know people who hide behind these lists. Just say, I'm busy. I was also listening to Brendan Bouchard earlier today and that just triggered what he was saying about distractions about listening to everybody and losing your life or direction through focusing on every day's business and normally every other person's business. So suddenly you realize that you haven't really lived that day. You've gone through the motions of taking care of taking care <laughs> of other things and not really focused on you. Mm, I love that. Yeah. It's a scary thought. It is scary, yeah, absolutely. But we've gone into our research again and good old tiny Buddha, simple wisdom for complex lives. We found this lovely article by Yvette Bolin and I like the way she starts this with the dreaded C word and that's clutter. Yeah. We all deal with it in some part of our world. We face it be it in our closets, in our offices, or even in our bodies. But the most distracting and debilitating cluttered space is in our heads. That's definitely in our mind, yes. Mm, you know that feeling, driving on autopilot to work, mm. forgetting important dates, leaving the water or, or even the stove on. I've actually left the iron on when I've been run, running out in the morning and thinking, I've got to be here, I, my mind is... I'm already on the bus or whatever form of transport. So I, I also <laughs> really resonate with the fact of stumbling over my words, unable to get my point across. I just had a flashback, Jill. Wow, share it. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to. When I was in my studio, I had a stove and I was cooking noodles on that stove. I turned it on and went back to my studio and completely forgot it. And then the phone rang and a neighbor called me and said, 
Is there a fire in your house? The whole kitchen. Yeah, that was really close. That was so <gasps> close. The whole noodles were like oh, yeah. burned in a in a package of coal. It, it looked like coal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was so close to break out a real oh. fire. Oh, that was horrible. I can still smell it when I now go back into this thought. So where was your mind when this was happening? In my music. Yeah. And when we're caught up in our heads, distracted by worry or fear, we're not present or clear-headed. And when we're not clear-headed, we lose the connection to ourselves, our environment and our lives. So mental clutter pulls us off centre, mm. disrupts our balance, it gets us so jumbled up and disorderly that we end up lost in La La Land. Oh, I love that song, by the way. <laughs> I've been in La La Land quite a bit. I might have forgotten to do something. I might have just focused really on the end of it instead of the detail of it. I've so been there because I either wanted to get this to this person so quickly... Hmm. that I totally forgot the body <laughs> instead of just the process. I've forgotten the details. I've missed something vital out and through rushing, hmm. so wanting to please or so wanting to get that out there, I really haven't been focused on what I'm doing. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, our subconsciousness is is running at least 95% of the day and what you focus on expands, right? So for me, it was the music. Well, Tony Robbins says, wherever focus goes, energy flows. And that is quite scary because whatever we focus on, we attract. The good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah, well, where we want it to happen or we don't want it to happen, the law of attraction will bring it you anyway because that is where all your energy is going to. Mm, very true. So shall we share... The tips that will help our listeners. I was just about to say, let's let's share the cure. Yeah. Decluttering the mind requires you to become intentional on, on where we place our intention and how we spend time and energies. I just explained. But how do you begin to clear away the clutter you can't see? Mm. It's clever, hey? Oh, yeah. Because how can we... We don't see it. We arrive, as we think, complete, and the person who are we, you know, talking to and conversing on, and perhaps we are helping, that person only sees us. But if they could look behind us and see all the clutter, they would probably think, my goodness me, how do you manage to carry that around with you on a daily basis? Well, I, I definitely agree with the first point from Yvette. Yeah. And she says to keep a gratitude log. Wow. And this is exactly what I do every day. I do it when I wake up and I do it when I go to sleep. I, do, I can't remember. I think I've kept a gratitude log since I was in my teens, to be honest. Mm. And I have actually found some of them. Wow. Um, and I was going through various changes. I remember I finding one when I was really stressed about my exams in school. Mm. And I was asking... Maybe it was the universe, I don't know who then, for some clearer guidance, because uh, I was so wanting to pass these exams mm. that I wasn't focusing on that I could pass these exams. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting cluttered in my head about what would my dad say? What would my mum think? Mm. Not just getting on with the process. So... Tell me, Frank, what has keeping a gratitude journal done for you? Keeping a gratitude journal has definitely made me more focused on my day. When I do this, I do it in a way that I visualize everything and I visualize everything with all my senses. I close my eyes, I take myself into this meditation space I really th these moments, most of them get cellular when I do this. Even if it's just little tiny things. For example, that I had a great green juice in the morning. Mm. What I also noticed is that the things I focus on in my gratitude visualization expand. There's a lovely saying that what you're grateful for today, you get to keep tomorrow. 
and it doubles mm. and it doubles and it doubles. <laughs> mm. I really like that because gratitude is appreciating what you have and it's saying that what you have is enough. What it also does for me is, and I say this all the time, when you are grateful, that's a good feeling. It gives you a good emotional state. So you mm. cannot be in a state of depression or worry or anxiety. This is not possible. It can't coexist. Yeah. This is how I start my day. I shared it on the last, on one of the last episodes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I intend my day. That's what we do. We intend our day. Our day doesn't intend us. No. We intend our day. And I can spend about five, ten minutes a day really listing some things I'm really grateful for, like health, my, my beautiful dog, my beautiful son, the fact I've woken up, the fact I work alongside you, mm. the fact that we get to share our time with our listeners in a very, very special way. Exactly, yeah. And, you know, whatever it is that's really special for you, even if you do this for about 30 days, you're going to have to really dig deep of what you're grateful for. It's easy at the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's easy, but when you start thinking about it every day and put down different topics every day, different points, yeah. you're going to start struggling. Yeah. Digging deep. Yeah. But it's all there, and that is what it is all there. the actual journey is about. Hmm. Mm. So I would say more so that using pen and paper is the best way to do this. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. You have to engage with your body. And when you write words down, you can actually feel that emotion within your body. So this is a beautiful feeling which comes up into your chest about feeling really good, really grateful. There's no better feeling other than feeling complete love Yeah. For something or someone that you, you know, you really, really care for. It's, it's when you're in gratitude, you're just in flow state bliss. Totally. And I feel protected. I have to say. You're observing the situation from perhaps 10 feet away. So you're no longer completely absorbed in the emotionality of it when you write these things down and try to journal every day for how long it takes to feel peace mm. on a topic. The more you do it, the faster the peace comes, like in a therapy. Simply letting it out is healing because we're relieved of the burden of keeping it all inside. And that, again, takes me back to my journal of my exams. I was mm. so badly worried and anxious, sleepless nights, not eating, feeling really sick. But because I journaled it, it was like speaking to a very best friend. Yeah, you, you get it out of your body, out of your system. So let's move on, Frank, to the next one. And this is one of our favorites. Yeah, this is actually what I do after my meditation. I just start laughing. <laughs> I think we do this in an incredible amount on a daily basis. because Especially when we talk. I know. It does lift your emotional load. It lifts stress off your shoulders. It brings balance to your psyche because laughter is present, is being in the moment, and it's the best medicine for relieving stress. Yeah, absolutely. When you laugh, there's no stress. No. And practice not taking yourself so seriously. Really have a good laugh. I mean, oh, yeah. a deep, hearty Santa laugh. Yeah, Uh, watch somebody funny, hang out with funny friends, go to a comedy club, read the Sunday comic strips, <laughs> or play with your kids or play with your dog. So many options. Stress no longer stands a chance when laughter is around. Yeah. But just connect with people. You will find something to laugh about. Yeah, absolutely. The next one is definitely also very, very important. You have to zone out. You have to take time to rest your mind every day. The best way to do this actually is you, you close down your computer, you shut down your mobile phone, put it on flight mode and just sit there in stillness and meditate. Mm. 
You can also take a break from chores and the duties of the day. Let the breath come and go naturally. And the eyes roam wherever they want. Look at the trees sway, the clouds float, the stars shimmer. Afterwards... That's exactly what I do on my balcony. Yeah. Afterwards, when it comes time to go to work, you'll find focus more easily than before your mini retreat. Yeah, and, and you're refreshed. It is really like a like a mini spa. It is. Yeah. I like the fact sometimes that I can be staring out the window and I don't see what's out the window, though. I see something else that I really like mm. or I really want. And it's like a daydream. They say, oh, Mm. Okay, penny for your thoughts. Where are you? Mm. Because your eyes are glazed or you're you're in another space for a moment. Totally. But I love those moments when I'm so deep in thought. I'm actually there. They are so so very precious. I, I yeah, I agree. And I never realized, you know, that my teacher, my guru, mm. who was the uh, tarot master, always used to say they are mini meditations, Jill. Mm. Yeah, I love that. And guess what happens after that? You get creative. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. And you do feel good as if you've just zoned out, as it says, yeah. for a few moments. And she says it too. I, I mean, connect with your inner child. This is exactly what I do when I go back and create some piece of music or when we create content or when we just talk and mastermind. Yeah. The next one I think is really vital. Um, Jim Rowan always used to say, make sure you've got a gatekeeper to your mind for the things that you let in, mm -hmm. listen to regularly. Yeah. Because Zig Ziglar always used to say, garbage in and garbage out. So, you know, it is a choice of what we take in, mm -hmm. but it's control your media intake. Honestly, Jill, I can't say much about control your media intake because my phone is always on flight mode when we sit here <laughs> together because I don't want to get distracted. I don't have a TV for, I would say, the last 20 years. Well, you know, if, I can remember every time I woke up in the morning, my mother would have a radio on. Mm. I would come home from school and perhaps my father had the TV on. Mm. And you would go into various people's houses and they'd always got the TV on. Okay. And regardless, really, you know, these are things that get into your psyche in a way. Oh, they do. Because if they're there, you've got two ears and you're still having this download. And maybe it's not by choice, mm. but if it gets to be by choice... It's so much healthier for you. Yeah, so true. Yeah, subtle opinions, biases and judgments creep into your mind and embed thought structures. Oblivious, you then form opinions that aren't your own simply because you heard it on the radio or television. That's kind of scary to me. So start paying attention to the noise that you let seep into your eyes and ears. Mm. Ask. Is this benefiting my life in any way or not? Mm. Subconsciously, I've been doing this, I think, because I really, I really care what I take in around me. Yeah. I remove yeah. all the clutter around my, my space here. Mm. Well, I wake up with Abraham Hicks. Mm. Yeah. And throughout the day, it's probably Tony Robbins, Bob Proctor. Yeah. I will obviously go on and see what's trending and have a look at it, but I will not have it continuously playing in the back of my hmm. mind somewhere. I, I need to, to have that gatekeeper constantly there. So totally. we are aware of what's going on and, and then we can be more helpful to others rather than being opinionated and judgmental. Yeah, very true. Hmm. So let's go on to the next one. Now, this is exciting. Because this is something that you've uh, escalated during the last couple of weeks. Yes. I get up in the morning. My shoes are next to my bed, my running shoes. And without even thinking about anything else, I put my shoes on and just run into the field. Wow. It's lovely. And when I come back, I do some more exercise. I shift my body to energy. I shift my body to flow state. Yeah, definitely. Well... 
I do enjoy my gym, I must admit. And I've, I've been an avid weight trainer for a long, long time because I was working with athletes. I was helping them in their injuries, their sports injuries. But I, I loved that activity myself. And unfortunately, I haven't done enough, I can honestly say. And sometimes when I need an energy boost, I will go out on my coast with the dog and have a good walk because it helps you sleep better, it helps you focus better, and it gets the endorphins going. So if you have an opportunity just to go out for a a good walk, a strong purposeful stride, whatever it is, you and you maintain some level of frequent activity, it certainly serves your health and well-being for years to come. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. And the next one, yeah, get clear on your priorities. Ooh, now this is big. Yeah, this is really big. I mean, this is exactly what we do. We focus and we get clear on what we want to achieve. And these achievements are automatically becoming our priorities. And I think you've got to evaluate anything that comes between you and your priorities. Is it worth you compromising on what matters most? That's a really good question to ask yourself. Yes. Sometimes we also use this question by Steve Jobs. Does this serve you in a year from now? I love that. Yeah, I like that very much. You've got to focus on people and things that you want to spend your time on, not things that you don't need or people that you don't really want to be around or have any real relationships with because what you're doing then mm. is completely off your center of, of the priority list that you probably set out and then you've lost time. So you, you're going to get angry with yourself then. So... Your priorities need to have your utmost focus. Yeah, I so agree. Mm, I love this next one. Yes. I mean, yeah, this is what we do every day. And this is inspired by a mentor, by really a very precious mentor who's close to our heart. Yeah, most certainly. Do something kind for another person. Yeah, and do it in a way that you never can get repaid. I love that. And my favorite Zig Ziglar from that book I quoted, See You at the Top. This is his quote, you will get everything you want if you help others get what they want. I absolutely love that quote. And it's so true. Mm. And it's also so fulfilling. Yeah. I mean, we notice this on a daily basis, Jill. Yep, that's so true. Whatever we feel is lacking in a situation is something we're not giving. And any time we feel lack or longing, we're out of balance. Mm. Sounds counterintuitive, but if you want to see more of something in your life, start giving that thing away, be it love, money, or attention. Wow. Yeah, make a point every day to be kind with your actions, your words, and especially with your thoughts. Because your thoughts expand into the universe and these energies will be received. If you don't feel genuinely moved to lend a helping hand or pass along a compliment, simply smile instead. That act alone is enough to improve your mood and clear the mental blockage between you and compassion. Mm. And appreciate what you have in your life. Yeah, it goes full circle back to gratitude, this, doesn't it, really? <laughs> yeah, it does, actually, yes. Yeah. <laughs> And talking about that, the last one, but not least, is let go. Well, for me, this takes me back into forgiveness. I do this also during my meditation. I have a special forgiveness visualization in my meditation, And I use this to really deeply forgive and to love. Mm. And I also use this to not only forgive myself, but also to ask for forgiveness with what I have done. Mm. 
Oh, yes. It's a two-way street. Absolutely. But since when does worrying get you anywhere? Release those useful negative thoughts of worry. And when we do this regularly, we drastically reduce the amount of stuff that needs our attention and depletes our energy. So many people need to hear that. I know. I would love to repeat that, actually, because it's so crucial. So release those useful negative thoughts of worry. When we do this regularly, we drastically reduce the amount of stuff that needs our attention and depletes our energy. Drawers and cabinets are not the only areas that need tidying. Our minds are full of thoughts in the form of judgments, expectations and fears that blind us from the truth. Mm, very true. <sighs> Try monitoring your mind and replace negative thoughts with positive ones. You will soon notice a change in your entire environment, outlook and life. Wow. That's incredible as well because... I can't remember who who said this. I think I've heard quite a few um, people say, try for seven days not complaining. Mm, I love that. And see what that does for you. It will change your life, I can tell you now. And talking about changing life, this concludes all of these vital tips. And this is maintaining a balanced life. Mm, absolutely. I would like to add one more of our own experience. Mm -hmm. If you define the things for you that are very precious to yourself, make them non-negotiable. Yeah. I think that's valuable. I think that's totally valuable. That made me stop and think for a moment. Um, <laughs> Life is full of surprises. We control how we respond to them. And the best way to strike a balance is to roll with the punches and go with the flow. Life's unpredictable course is our opportunity to meet surprises with acceptance and grace. Mm. I love it that. Helps, yeah, it helps to have an open mind. Mm. So we really want to ask all our listeners here, Think carefully, what are some ways you find clarity, you find a balance in your life and you are able to focus from finding some kind of peace, from judgments, from emotions, from limiting beliefs even, from worries that we carry around with ourselves. Hmm. Yeah, and to wrap this up, I want to conclude and say, make the conscious decision to be your best version of you every day. And don't find any excuses to be that person you want to be. Be okay if you disagree. That happens. So focus all your energy on what is right for you every day, that moment, and you will become your true self. Your true self will step forward. And you will be in flow state faster than you can imagine. Mm. And I also think that we have choices. Every single day we have a choice to either sit and worry and waste time, to try and control things we know we won't be able to control, so we waste vital life energy on that. Yeah. It's just to have more clarity on what we can control and some peace of mind on what we can't. And Donna Smalling, a little quote I've got from here. Life is as simple or complicated as we make it. Beautiful. <laughs> and in saying that, we are sending out love and gratitude to all of you. And this is Frank and Jill signing out from where your safe zone for discovering your true self is created. See you next week, guys. Thanks for listening. And as we always say, spread the love, because this is what it's all about. Spread the love and inspire the world. Bye, guys. See you all next week.